within a couple hours, just imagine all these alveoli are, are collapsing and making it harder for the infant to breathe. So the decision was made to deliver Cervanta to the lungs. The infant was intubated and paralyzed. You know what that means when you say that the infant was paralyzed? Mm -hmm. Give him a paralytic? Yeah, a muscle paralytic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so Vecuronium, I think, is yes. rock. Your rock. The rock. They say rock. They like better because the vecuronium it takes like a minute to two minutes to actually take effect, whereas the rock is faster. So they're like bagging for like almost two minutes, just waiting. Oh, but Joe G, they're trying to get rid of it and only use rock instead. Okay, and rock is uh, short for rock curonium. Yeah. <laughs> the Rock. Doesn't that sound like a cool name? <laughs> All right. So the infant was sedated, paralyzed, then intubated with a three millimeter cuffless endotube and ventilated with TCPL. Time cycle pressure limited. Um, peak pressure to achieve four to six mLs per kilogram. The rate was set at 40 per minute. FiO 2.4. PEEP of four. The eye time, 0.3 seconds. During the procedure, the saturation fell to 80%, but improved shortly after. There was no pneumothorax. Do you know why pneumothorax is a concern after delivering surfactant? Yes. So what would you recommend now? Surfactant has been given. Well, they're intubated, correct? At this point? Yes. So, do we wait? Do we. I would want to wait to see how they do. Yeah. Okay. Get their sats between 88. So, start weaning them? Get their sats between 88 and 92. If their sats are Okay. Okay. So, like maybe four to six hours on the ventilator, because and then wean them. Did you just intubate just to deliver the surfactants? Yes. Then, as yeah. soon as they're good, then extubate. Because mm -hmm. if that's your only reason, then they don't need to be intubated. For too right. Long. When you watch the video on YouTube, the insure strategy. The insure strategy. What did they do? Did they wait four hours? No. 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 <clears throat> Until it was fixed. Yeah. yeah, they didn't even tape the tube. Yeah, they were ready to yes. take it out. Yeah, so they intubate, deliver the surfactant, and then pull the tube out. Put them back in nasal CPAP. Um, I don't know if that's what you were going to see at Broward and Memor uh, Broward and Jody. That's what they did. We oh, really? They intubated surf, as they called it, and then pulled the tube out. Surfed. Surfed. Okay. <laughs> um, so they didn't even wait to see an x ray or anything, right? What about the no. sedation? How long does that take to get off? Oh, good point. Because why would they just take it out right away if they're sedated? Yeah, heavy sedation. Yeah, good point. Especially yeah. with a muscle pain. And they're paralytic. You need to be awake yeah. before you can. Yeah, that's a very good point. The baby, because Joy intubated a baby, um, and the. They were not paralyzed. Oh, that's why he could extubate so quickly. Oh, uh, makes sense. Oh, maybe they don't get the paralyzed. Yeah, they don't like sedated. They don't like sedated. Ah, uh, yeah. so they're not sedated when they're intubated? No, they're not sedated. No, like you go through the records. None of them were sedated. Really? One no. baby I had had Versed. Everybody else, a little bit of fentanyl, a little bit, but no, no neuromuscular blockage or wow. anything like that. Mm -hmm. So they don't like to sedate them. Okay. Okay, so one hour after surfactant delivery, we've got good blood gases, FiO2 was weaned, and then the infant was extubated and put back on bubble CPAP. All right, good. Um, this scenario, we've got an infant full term, 3,200 grams, lung development is normal, the infant went to the OR because of bowel obstruction, was returned to NICU, sedated and paralyzed. What settings would you place her on? Oh, that's what um, first, let's start with the mode of ventilation. 
Yes. With VG. <laughs> so SIM VATCPO with VG. Uh, and pressure yeah. supporter. All right, so what if you're using the servo and you don't have TCPO? Uh, then SIMV, PRVC. Okay, with so pressure SIMV, support. PRVC, or? Volume. volume. Guarantee. Yes. Or TCPO with volume guarantee. SIMV, TCPO, volume guarantee? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> what rate would you use? So like 40. Rate of 40. 40. Do we do tidal volume or pressure? Uh, so you could start off like at 13. So it's like 12 to 19. So in between that. About 15 and now. Yeah. That would. Is time divided by a thousand, so 3.2 kilograms. And we're going to set the tidal volume at 15 of those. All right, so four times three, three is 12. That's 12. 4.8. So I think a 13 ml tidal volume. Mm -hmm. Okay. And our mode of ventilation is set. Uh, SIMV TCPO. <laughs> or PRVC, SIMV PRVC. With some pressure support on both. Um, rate. FIO2? FIPA 5? Yeah, because yeah, they have normal lung pathology, so... Did you want to have an option? Okay, normal lung, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so room air would be fine. Humidifier for sure. Um, and you would like Nava? Well, this is going to be short term ventilation with normal lung pathology. So once the baby wakes up, it should be a quick extubation. Nava would be great if we're having difficulty weaning. Because that's the expense of putting that uh, EBI catheter in for a short term where we're not expecting problems. How much? And that's before it gets put in, because then you have to add the cost of the, and then the, the labor. The, the manufacturer <laughs> recommends it needs to be changed every seven days. So that's like a thousand dollars a month. So they're trying to keep it in about 10 to 14 days at because it only sees spending two fifty every days for the I see. So to cut costs, they're only using it two weeks. Mm -hmm. So even though they say seven, but they try to push it to ten to fifty. Oh, I see your point. They don't put a new one in on day seven and then stop it. Yeah. If it's good, they'll continue. And if it's bad, then they'll change it up. But oh, I see. Um, 
All right, so the, this infant has normal blood gases, normal lung pathology. The infant wakes up from sedation. What would you recommend? Extubate. Yes, extubation. Um, a SAT of 98% on whatever FiO2 we put them on. So they could go to room air if, if they don't need supplemental oxygen? Right. All right, scenario number three, is an infant was born full term, weighing 3,500 grams. Meconium aspiration had occurred. Um, the infant was received in NICU from labor and delivery, being ventilated with 100% oxygen via a 3.5 millimeter endotracheal tube. So if that's the case, um, do you remember what we talked about with meconium aspiration? How a lot of infants will have meconium aspiration, but nothing needs to be done. That's yeah. severe. Unless, Unless it's bad. yeah. So severe distress, desaturating, yeah. right. then they need to be intubated, suctioned. Yeah. Um, so obviously this infant showed distress. Yeah. Intubated with a three and a half millimeter endotube. What strategy would you use to ventilate this newborn? Um, and what to keep in mind is with meconium aspiration and didn't do well, there was probably a period of hypoxemia. And do you remember what happens to newborns if they have a period of hypoxemia around the time of delivery or right after delivery? Bradycardia? Pulmonary hypertension. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, the pulmonary <coughs> vessels constrict and they stay like that. And now you've got the blood, instead of going to the lungs, crosses over the ductus arteriosus, and you've got a huge shunt. It's hard to oxygenate them. Um, so what if you keep their oxygen level high? Do you think that helps the pulmonary vessels to dilate? No. Like a good amount of oxygen? Mm -hmm. It does. It does. So yeah, a good keeping the PaO2 80 to 100, like a, with adults. <coughs> It's going to relax the pulmonary vessels. So keep PaO2 80 to 100. That will relax the pulmonary vessels. Hyperventilating and getting the CO2 down helps to relax the pulmonary vessels. Now, if we want to keep the oxygenation high, are we concerned about the blood vessels, those crazy blood vessels growing in the eyes? Absolutely. No, if it's a full term? No. no. Oh, it's full term? Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. So full term, we're not worried about the amount of oxygen that's in the blood. We just know if we keep the oxygen level high, we're going to keep the pulmonary vessels dilated. Okay. And it's not going to hurt the eyes because we've got full term. Right. So this scenario, the baby became hypoxic from the aspiration, mm -hmm. which caused the retention, and then, so this is what we're recommending. Yes. So your strategy would be to use, um, keep oxygenation, keep PaO2s high, um, and keep what? Suctioning, okay. Suction the meconium out. Um, hyperventilate, so use a fast respiratory rate. We said 40 to 60. This would be a time to use 60, 60. breaths per minute, so you're blowing off CO2. Um, so it says start off with a high FiO2 to prevent pulmonary vasoconstriction. Hyperventilate to prevent PPHN. And then it shows you the setting. All right, so ABGs are drawn from the umbilical artery and from the right radial artery. Why would we draw two blood gases, one from the ar right arm and then one from the umbilical uh, pre artery? Post. Pre and post. Post. Yeah, it's a preductal blood gas and a postductal blood gas. So when you're drawing blood from the radial artery, um, that's the first vessel that comes off of the aorta, and that actually occurs before the shunt, before the ductus arteriosus. So you get the really good oxygenated blood that actually did get to the lungs, it came back to the left heart, and it came into the aorta. So you're getting that good oxygenation in the right arm. But then you got the shunted blood going to the other parts of the aorta, 
Um, so you're going to have a lower oxygen saturation if there's pulmonary vasoconstriction. So there's a difference in the PaO2, um, 72 umbilical artery, 300 in the um, right radial artery. <clears throat> so what is your recommendation? Endomethacin. You want to constrict the ductus arteriosus? Uh, it would be some about prostaglandin. <clears throat> You'd want to stop the prostaglandin from like being made? Um, that if you stop the, the prostaglandin, that means the ductus arteriosus will close. Is that what you want? Yeah, essentially. Um, I want it to close. So you have pulmonary vessels are really tight. And the blood is having a real hard time getting through those vessels. And now you're going to tie off the ductus arteriosus. What's so going to happen to pulmonary pressures? They'll increase. <laughs> They're going okay. even higher. Okay. Yeah. So what else can we do to get those pulmonary vessels to relax? Does it tell us or does it make us guess? It makes us guess. Very good. Um, so potent pulmonary vasodilator is nitric oxide. Um, you add it to the ventilator circuit and it goes into the lungs and it diffuses through the alveoli into the capillaries and relaxes those pulmonary arterioles and capillaries. And then the pressures come down immediately. Nitric oxide is the answer. Why would we use Viagra as opposed to nitric oxide? It's cheaper. By like a thousand dollars a day. Yeah.